one of the highlights of the Vanity Fair article was the uh, uh, comment about the, the banker who woke up one morning to find that the bank, Irish bank debts that he'd assumed were only worth 50 cents in the dollar were all of a sudden worth 100 cents in the dollar. He couldn't believe his luck. And uh, anybody who talks to friends in Wall Street or the City of London know that, I mean, for the last two or three years, they've been laughing at these Irish fools who believed that uh, the way to ingratiate themselves with the market was to ensure all of their gambling losses. You know, this isn't uh, the sign of a competent, well-run country. This is the sign of a country that doesn't know what it's doing. Contrary to what we're being told right now, if you look at all of the evidence across from the analysts operating in the markets to the market participants themselves, we know that the markets are already pricing in very strong probability of the Irish default. For example, at the Davis, uh, during the Davis meeting, there was a global investor poll for the institutional investors looking at their expectations in terms of Greece and Ireland in the probability of default. 58% uh, of global investors, and these are institutional investors, large holders of debt, both sovereign and banks' debts, 58% of them expect Greece to default, and 53% expect Ireland to default. If you look at the credit default swap markets right now, which are effectively pricing the insurance, the cost of insurance of the Irish debt, even in the government debt itself, the expectation of the markets is that within the next five years there is a 40% chance of default or restructuring of the government debt. This is not even touching upon the bank's debt, which, is, which cannot be really priced currently because the guarantee is effectively merges it with the government debt in the view of the market as well. We've got to be clear why the IMF is here in the first place. It is here because the financial markets don't believe that Ireland can solve its economic problems and its banking crisis together. The figures are just too big. The burden is just too heavy. There's a growing sense of realism, both in Ireland and by the financial markets, that this isn't really sustainable. So the only people who are left thinking that we can carry on like this are the, the EU. And we need to go back to Barroso and we need to go back to the other members of the European Union, the other countries, and tell them we need to be realistic about this. If you actually want a healthy Eurozone with healthy member states. We can't go on the way we're going on. It's pretty clear that there's an unsustainable amount of debt in Ireland right now. It's pretty clear that the markets don't believe that there's any way that we can avoid a sovereign default if we continue to insist on paying back all of the bank-related debts. Uh, it's pretty clear that the markets believe that if we insist on hanging these bank debts around the necks of Irish taxpayers, then the sovereign is insolvent. Uh, the proof of that is very simple. It, when the IMF and EU and ECB came to town, they offered us a liquidity facility, short-term liquidity, so we could keep things ticking over until such a time as we were able to pay back our debts. If we'd been facing a liquidity problem, and if the markets believed that that's what we were facing, uh, then the uh, provision of liquidity to Ireland would have led to a decline in the interest rates that the market was demanding uh, on Irish government bonds. And the opposite happened. Uh, the interest rates went up. What that is saying is that the markets believe, and they're shouting at the top of their voices, that Ireland is insolvent and will remain insolvent unless and until we rid ourselves of these bank debts.